Hey, hey, artist. I am so excited to share with you something a little different for my YouTube channel. This video is gonna be the first of three parts, which walks you through each and every step to creating this realistic tiger portrait. Basically, this is gonna be your sneak peek into exactly what members inside the Wildlife Painting Academy get access to each month. So the Wildlife Painting Academy is my signature, super affordable monthly membership that teaches you how to paint realistic wildlife easily. It has a huge library full of full length masterclasses, just like the one that you're gonna be watching here, and new ones are added each month. You can learn more about it in the description of this video. That being said, let's jump in. Hey, hey, welcome to another tutorial. Today, we're gonna to be learning how to paint this majestic tiger, complete with some fancy backlighting. I love using backlighting as a technique because it just adds a certain level of drama to the piece, and it gives you an opportunity to play with different light levels, which is always a fun thing. Um, so like usual, I'm gonna be painting with oils, but you can definitely get the same effect with acrylics, though I highly, highly, highly recommend working with a slow drying medium because otherwise you're gonna be constantly fighting with that, you know, really fast drying paint. Okay, so the colors that I'm gonna be using today are gonna to be ivory black. Our tiger has got lots of nice black stripes, so we definitely wanna be using that. And then like all of my paintings, I'm also gonna be using burnt umber, one of my favorites. It's just an essential for pretty much any painting ever. Um, and then we're gonna be using titanium white as well. This is a very opaque, powerful white. And so because our tiger has beautiful rusty colored fur, we're gonna be using burnt sienna. This is a beautiful transparent tone. Um, we're gonna be able to do some really fun glazing with this after two to really punch up those saturation levels. And then finally, I'm gonna be using cobalt violet hue. This is a really beautiful transparent purple tone. I love using this in shadows, especially since we're gonna have that nice contrast of our rusty colored fur. Love using this one. Um, probably won't end up using it until we start glazing. Um, so I probably won't end up putting this one on my palette quite, quite yet, but that's okay, we will later. Um, and then, so I won't be using this for my underpainting, but the medium that I will be using for this painting is going to be Liquid Original by Winsor & Newton. Um, I'm gonna be using this while I'm detailing, but I'm also gonna be using this while I glaze too. So I'm not gonna put it on my palette yet because I don't really like using mediums while I'm working on my underpainting. I mostly use paint thinner, um, but that's what we're gonna be using. I also have my handy dandy jar of paint thinner here, odorless paint thinner. I have a rag nearby, and then my brushes that I'm gonna be using are just a collection of basically random filbert brushes, a couple of round brushes. They're very inexpensive, definitely nothing fancy here. Um, I don't think that you should have to spend an arm and a leg on your brushes. You can definitely get some really, really great work done with stuff from even honestly like a dollar store. <laughs> it's more so in the technique, not necessarily the brushes that you use. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna be using today. So then we're gonna shift these over and I am going to basically set up my palette. Oh, and I have this here. It's just a disposable palette paper. I find this stuff very handy. Um, so yeah, you can just mix all your paints on top here. It doesn't bleed through. And then when you're done, you can just toss a sheet. All right, so I'm gonna start off by putting a little bit of, whoops, that was a lot, but I'm gonna be using a lot of darkness in the background to really make that backlighting pop, so that's okay. So I'm putting down some of that ivory black. Next up, I'm gonna be putting down some burnt umber. My little tube here is running out. Fun fact, this is one of the few colors that I actually stock up on because I go through it so quickly. And then I'm gonna be putting down burnt sienna. So burnt sienna is going to be contributing to that beautiful orange color and I already can't wait to start glazing with it because it's such a gorgeous color for glazing. And then lastly, I'm gonna be putting some titanium white. Now titanium white is a very powerful, opaque white. Um, so you absolutely cannot really use it for glazing unless you're aiming for a foggy look, but I will not be. 
Um, okay, and then I'm not gonna put this on my palette quite yet because I'm gonna be saving it for glazing and I just don't want it to dry on my palette. So we're gonna save that one for later. So, all right, we can get started soon. I am going to be taking my handy dandy palette knife here and I'm going to pre-mix some colors. So on our most extreme ends of the spectrum, we've got our pure ivory black here and then we have our pure titanium white. So when I'm setting up my palette, I like to pre-mix a gradient of colors that I'm gonna be using. So it makes my underpainting go really quickly and then we can do all sorts of color corrections with our glazes. Um, so just kind of looking at my painting here, I've got a lot of those really dark stripes and I've chosen to go with a backlit look. So there's gonna be a lot of this sort of edge of the cat here that is going to be really bright. And what I love about this is that it gives you an opportunity to really play with those different light levels. And because he's fuzzy, he's got all that fur, it, it's gonna be a lot of fun to paint too. So backlighting of fur is honestly one of my favorite things to do. So I'm stoked to be able to paint this. Now, because we are gonna have that backlighting on our painting, contrast is gonna be really important here. So something's only gonna appear as bright basically as you know contrast will allow so to really make that pop we're going to be going for the really dark background and we're going to be laying in some really uh really heavy shadowing throughout the rest of the cat um yeah as you kind of see i've basically just given my canvas here a solid wash of dilute acrylic paint just so it dries super fast and that way you know we already have a slightly darker background to work on and i have my sketch under here as well that i can see so I have ivory black here is going to be my purest color on that end of the spectrum. And then I'm going to start to mix basically dark fur colors um, and then adding this in. So I'm going to start off by grabbing a good chunk of uh, burnt umber and then also quite a bit of burnt sienna and a little bit of this ivory black here. So this is where I'm going to blend this together. It's going to look super, super dark at first because all of these colors are quite transparent and they're all very dark in their purest forms. But as you can kind of see, I'm smearing that around a little bit. It's actually a really nice rich color and that's gonna be great for our darkest, uh, darkest parts of the fur. All right, so now I'm going to scoop up a good chunk of that and now I'm gonna to start to build it up to the brighter parts of the fur. So I'm actually gonna grab more of this burnt sienna and grab a little bit of titanium white. So titanium white, like I mentioned before, is a very opaque color. So it's got a lot of power here. So mix that through with your palette knife. And I always use a palette knife for mixing just so I don't end up wasting any paint. Now that's mixed through, I'm gonna separate out some more, grab more of that burnt sienna, and then grab more titanium white. All right, so we're getting lighter now. I need to take a little bit more burnt sienna. I'm gonna grab that too. More of that down. All right, so I want this to actually be a lot lighter. So I'm gonna grab even more titanium white than more burnt sienna because I want it to be brighter and more saturated. There you go. All right, and I still wanna make bit more so I'm going to take that separate this out and then add even more titanium white so I'm not worried too too much at this point about um, about having like the saturation level that I want because I know I'm gonna be able to color correct with my glazes after and really boost that up so I'm more so looking to have a good range of values first all right, so wiping off my palette knife, 
So here now we've got a really nice spread of colors that are going to give us pretty much the range we need for our orange fur. Now this tiger also has some white fur. So I'm going to mix these up next. <clears throat> and what I'm going to be doing basically is taking a combination of titanium white, a little bit of burnt umber, and a little bit of that ivory black. So I'm going to start off by taking this here. Um, taking a bit of burnt umber, a little bit of ivory black, and mix that through. So now I have a nice dark gray with a hint of color from that burnt umber. Separate some out, and now do the same thing I just did, but for this tone. So grabbing more titanium white, so I want to create lighter shades, and mixing that through again with my palette knife. And one more. All right, so that's pretty good. And then we've got on our opposite end of the spectrum, we've got this pure ivory black that we can grab from. We can even grab from the pure burnt umber. And then on the opposite side of the spectrum, we've got our pure titanium white. So this gives us a really great range to be able to choose from. Okay, so now we can get started with our painting. All right, so let's jump into our painting. Our palette's all set up, we're good to go. So I'm grabbing a very large filbert brush here. This is my favorite brush shape because it's super versatile. You can cover a lot of ground with the broad side of the bristles and then you turn it on its side and you've got a nice fine knife edge that you can use to get some great detail. So I'm going to start by wetting my brush a little bit in my paint thinner and then just basically rubbing it on um, a rag so I get most of that off but my bristles are wet at least. All right so like most of my paintings I'm going to start by mapping out the darkest parts. So one thing I want to make note of here is that this tiger here has lots of little fine stripes. So there's lots of fine ones on his forehead and around the eyes. And then he's also got some bigger stripes on his shoulders and back and a couple bigger ones on his face. So what we're going to be doing is I'm only going to be blocking in the bigger stripes here, the bigger black areas, and we're not going to be doing those super fine stripes yet. And the reason why is because things are going to get really muddy. Um, if you aren't careful. And the thing is, is that it's a lot easier to paint the sort of base fur first. So let's say we're kind of looking right below the eye, this area where there's some really fine, small little black stripes in there. It's a lot easier to paint all of this orangey brown fur first. And then rather than, you know, painting in the stripes and carefully cutting around them, painting that base fur first and then putting on the stripes. It's a lot easier that way. Um, but with the bigger stripes, it's you can still go ahead and put those in, but that's why I'm gonna be a little strategic. Um, I also want my background to be super dark here because I want that backlighting to really pop. So I'm going in with a tiny bit of paint thinner to just give this paint a little bit more flow to it. And then I'm gonna start to block in a couple of areas here. So again, using a very large filbert brush, basically the biggest that you're comfortable with. Um, and even if you're not super comfortable with it, I challenge you to try it anyways. And just kind of blocking this in. Tell with the shape here, I'm using the knife edge of the brush in order to kind of cut around here. And then in some areas, I'll be able to use the broad side of the bristles to um, actually cover some good ground. All right, so nice dark stripe here. So one reason why I tend to not use medium while I'm working on my underpainting is because the paint thinner, using paint thinner instead as a medium is gonna allow your underpainting to dry really quickly or maybe not really quickly, but much more quickly than if you were using um, mediums or even like a linseed oil or something. And realistically, we wanna jump into, you know, the next phase in our painting a lot more quickly. We wanna be able to move on. And something that holds people back a lot from working with oils is thinking that, you know, you have to wait weeks in between all of your layers to dry. 
And depending on what you use as a medium, that can be your reality. But sometimes you can use other mediums and not have that issue. So I like using paint thinner to do my underpainting because it dries a lot more quickly. And another thing too is that it actually allows you to get in a little bit more layering with wet into wet um, because it's a lot thinner. And that can be really helpful for getting a little bit, you know, more into your underpainting rather than having the paint muddy up completely right away. So those are my reasons why I like using paint thinner as my medium first. Just going in here, this ivory black, and these big kind of stripes, they're actually shaped like spots up here. I'm just kind of blocking those in but not going too crazy yet because I know I'm gonna have to cut around them. All right, so the backs of our ears here or black, lock those in. <clears throat> so one thing you'll notice here where I've got my backlighting, I'm gonna be really careful to keep my dark paint away from there um, because I don't wanna muddy things up because we are gonna be adding uh, bright paint there, like a much paler paint. And again, because we're working wet into wet, I don't wanna muddy things up more than I have to. All right, so there's gonna be lots of black around the eyes there, but I think I'm gonna move to a slightly smaller brush for that point. <laughs> so yeah, I'm not gonna go for any of these small stripes happening here. Just not worth it at this point. Gonna make a mess. And when I'm working on my underpainting, I'm taking care to basically not take care um, I'm going in very rough with my brush strokes and not taking care of any detail whatsoever because I, you know, you're underpainting. It can be really tempting to jump into detail right away, especially with painting animals. Detail can be really fun. But if you jump into detail too early, you're actually going to be kind of running the risk of creating a painting that isn't structurally sound. If you're not setting up a good foundation for it. Um, so that's why in my underpainting, I work with the largest brush possible so that I can't jump into detail. Um, and it basically forces me to, it forces me to actually focus on the foundation of the painting first. So focusing on shape and form and values, that is going to be much more important. All right, so while I've got this big brush, I'm gonna kind of block in the background here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it with ivory black because I want that background to be really dark. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of carefully cut around where the fur is gonna be because again, we're gonna have that backlighting and that's gonna be some really bright light fur. And yes, yeah, so once we start detailing, we'll actually be able to, you know, add a little bit more brightness without making it muddy in the black, but you know, it's smart to kind of set up our foundation properly. I'm just gonna go, yeah, go ahead and block in this background and I'm just kind of feathering my brush strokes inwards towards where the fur is gonna be. 
My apologies if you can hear the sirens. Joys of city living. This is the beauty of the filbert brush because you can cover big areas with the broadside, but then using the knife edge, you can actually kind of cut in nicely. So I'm going to leave a tiny little margin right on top of the ear there. So there again, there'll be the backlighting, but we'll be able to really amp that up later. So here, because the fur is shorter on the hair or on the head, I'm just kind of using the broad side of my bristles here and feathering in the brush strokes. So it's not giving me a lot of kind of fur definition, but we're also not trying to get the fur definition at this point. I'm just trying to block, it, block in our underpainting. All right, so over here, it's gonna cover all the space. All right, so that's sufficient for our background. We can go and add some other fun stuff later once we get into our detailing phase, but that's going to serve us well right now. Okay, so I'm going to quickly block in the eyes, the dark parts of the eyes, and then we're going to be able to actually get started on our painting. So here I'm just grabbing a, I mean, it's a pretty big round brush, but it comes to a nice fine point. It just gives me, you know, some room to get in here. And I'm going to go ahead and block that in. Just kind of block in the pupil here too. Just kind of put in these bigger stripes up here, a little easier to cut around. So we'll just kind of block those in. And now the other eye. So that's kind of sufficient for what I want to do. I'm not going to do any of these stripes down here because that's going to get muddy. And I think that's pretty good, even though our cat looks a little cross-eyed right now, but that's okay. Because there's going to be lots more detail going into there. Okay, so I'm going to wash this round brush. And then I'm going to be able to jump into my painting.
Okay, so I'm grabbing the same big filbert that I was using before, and now I'm actually gonna start to create our cat hair. So I'm gonna be starting with my darkest tones and then moving to the brighter tones as I go. So I'm still using paint thinner as my medium here. So dipping my brush in here just so it gets a little wet and I can thin out this paint a little bit. Work it through my bristles. And then I'm gonna jump in here. So one of the things is we're gonna have some like really dramatic shadows happening here because we're going with that backlighting. Um, and the backlighting only really makes sense if we've got those, you know, dramatic shadows happening. So we're gonna be able to do a lot of color correcting once we have our glazes. So if your shadows aren't quite as dark as you would like, um, you can then go in and darken them and all that good stuff. So here what I'm doing is I'm basically gonna be blocking in the darkest colors. So I've got this mixture here of Burnt Umber, Ivory Black, and Burnt Sienna. And then we're gonna be blending everything together after to make sure everything looks nice and smooth. So I tend to think of this stage a little bit almost like paint by numbers in a way, but I'm kind of making it up as I go along. Um, but I'm just basically looking at filling in these big expanses of color without jumping into any detail yet. So we've got our backlighting here, we've got some brightness. There's kind of a bit of a light source coming up here. Um, so the lower portion of this cat's shoulder region is, uh, is gonna be pretty dark. So again, this is where I'm using the broad side of my filbert in order to kind of cover bigger areas and then turning it on the knife side to get into some tighter areas. So I'm just kind of feathering out these brush strokes a little bit so that when we start to go in with our lighter shades, there's a little bit of blending going on. For the most part, I'm trying to cut around the stripes because I don't want to muddy things up too much. But if you run them over a little bit, not a huge deal. We're just working in our underpainting right now. All right, so I'm gonna stick with this color for now and move to other parts of my paintings. Pretty much all I wanna do here because there's gonna be lighter rust color tones up here. So I'm gonna go into the face. So now our tiger here has a really, <laughs> really nice frowny, scrunchy face, <clears throat> which is just gonna be further emphasized by the fact that we've got this really dramatic lighting. Um, so we're gonna lay in this heavy shadow here and kind of carve in the shape of the face. They kind of have a center crease where the fur almost kind of pushes in on itself. So it's gonna create a little bit of a dark crease in the center there. So we're gonna make sure we put that in.
So I'm gonna take this off here, wash my brush, and I'm gonna move into the next lightest shade here. Still pretty dark, so I'm gonna lay it on my canvas here and then might actually need to move to the next lightest shade. So you can see how similar that actually looks. So what I'm gonna do instead is actually go in with my next lightest shade. All right, so there we go. I'm gonna start to stroke that in. Again, trying to cut around those stripes for the most part. And put in the ne next lightest shade. So I'm gonna work on the face now. So can you imagine how, <laughs> how tricky this would be if you had to carefully cut around all these teeny weeny little stripes and spots that you'd have on the forehead here? That would be very frustrating. So it's a lot easier to just place them in afterwards. Even still, some of these stripes are kind of getting in the way, and I probably should have just painted them in afterwards, but oh well, they're there now. So there's a nice kind of rim of white fur that's happening around the face. So I'm gonna be leaving spots in the canvas blank so that we can go in with those gray tones that we mixed up.
Alright, so now on the nose. Not worrying about blending things out too early at this point in the game. We're just going to lay down our colors first and then we're going to be able to do some blending. Take that paint off my brush and now moving into our next lightest shade here. Again, kind of thinning it out with some paint thinner so it flows more easily. And I'm carefully brushing that in here. I'm not going to push this backlighting too far yet because we've got that wet background layer. Just don't want to muddy things up too much. So once we start to move into our detail phase, that's when we're really going to be able to dial that up. All right, so that's pretty good there. So I'm actually going to kind of leave, <clears throat> leave most of that kind of periphery a little untouched because I'm afraid of muddying it up too much at this point. Looking good. So the, pretty much the rest of the cat here we're going to be doing with our gray to make up that white fur. So wash your brush to make sure you're removing all of that rusty colored tone and we're going to jump into the gray. All right, so still working with the same large filbert, dampening my brush with paint thinner and going into this darkest gray. I'm going to start to layer that in here. Carefully cutting around here. All right, so now I'm just going to pack this in with the chin here. So the chin itself is mostly in shadow, except we have this sort of backlit fluff down at the bottom. So that's why I'm going to kind of cut around that area, but the rest of the chin will be pretty dark. And we'll be able to add more of that fluff, that cute cat chin fluff, once we start detailing.
Now over here, I'm gonna do the same thing and kind of leave that little bit of a margin right on the edge. I think I'll go in probably with white, just pure titanium white to do that backlighting. And then once we do glazing, we can add all sorts of fun colors there. We'll probably switch to a smaller brush at that point too, just to make things easier. Just gonna go ahead and block all of this part in with our dark gray. So, while I have this gray, I'm going to go and block in the ears here, and then we can work some other tones in. Again, kind of leaving a little bit of that margin so that we can have our backlighting. I'm going to quickly wash this gray off my brush and grab the next lightest one. I'm going to put this over here. As you can see, <laughs> oh, the paint is already getting muddy, so we gotta be careful. pretty good. So I'm going to quickly wash this. So I'm going to be putting in, first I want to paint in the eyes. So I'm actually going to grab that same small round brush that I used and I am going to go ahead and block in the eyes. So I'm going to grab this darkest brown that I mixed up, adding a little bit of paint thinner so that it just flows more easily. And then go block in the cast shadow. that. I'm going to go in with this same lighter rusty colored paint that we mixed up and go put that in there too. I'm actually going to fill the entire blank spot. that off. And since I just filled in the entire light spot, I'm going to go in with this. And I'm just going to add a little kiss of brightness down at the bottom. There we go. So for our kitty nose, I'm going to go in with this tone that I mixed up here. So it's our combination of Ivory black, burnt umber, burnt sienna, and a little bit of titanium white. And I'm going to go ahead and block in our cat nose.
perfect. Okay, washing this brush. And now I'm gonna grab a smaller filbert brush. Find one in my collection. All right, so moving to a smaller filbert brush here. And now I'm actually gonna go in with pure titanium white. Adding a little bit of paint thinner again, just so it flows better. And this is where I'm gonna go place in that backlighting. So I'm gonna carefully cut around. So I'm trying not to blend anything at this point because we've got basically like dark, dark on either side. And I'm just gonna stroke this in and then we will blend. So keep it rough for now. So I'm stroking my brush basically away from the cat towards the darker background. Um, and I find that that way at least I'm pushing lighter paint towards the dark rather than pushing the dark towards the light. Um, it just makes it a little bit easier. For the top of the ear here, it's a little tricky. Just kind of brush that in. that's sufficient okay so now that we have everything kind of blocked in what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to this large filbert brush and I'm gonna add a little bit of preliminary detail um, so it's not much at this point but it's gonna give us something to work with so basically hmm let's see here I'm gonna go in with this lightest shade that we mixed up and now I'm going to be paying attention to my brush strokes because I'm going to start to build up a little bit of preliminary fur detail. So I'm going to be going like this. So we're working very roughly because remember we still have like we're working into a wet underpainting. But I just want to build a little bit up. And that paint underneath is um, still wet so you're going to have some blending of colors but that's okay. is just gonna give us something to work with. You can see here I'm using the knife edge of my filbert brush to be able to get these sort of uh, this little bit of fur texture going on. Again I'm trying to cut around the stripes. And then on the face here, I'm not going to be adding too much fur texture here. We're going to be able to build this up. It was just looking a little, needed some more fuzz here. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to grab this titanium white on my brush and just, since I've got this other paint on it, I'm just going to grab a bit more. So now I'm not getting pure titanium white, but I want to add a little bit of texture up here.
Great. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing with the light gray. So I'm gonna wash off my brush. And then I'm just jumping in with this lightest shade that I mixed up here. I'm just adding a little bit of that preliminary fur detail. All right, so that's enough for there. Now one more thing I just wanna quickly do before we start blending is I wanna go back in with my darkest part here. And now that I've added a lot more light, I'm having a little bit of contrast issues. So I'm gonna go and reinforce that. So just strengthening some of those shadows. And again, we're working with wet paint here. So there's definitely gonna be some blending and that's okay. Okay, perfect. Wash off your brush, and now we are gonna do some dry blending. All right, so for our dry blending here, I'm just gonna be using, let's see here. Um, here I just have a big kind of fluffy round brush, dry bristles, which means they have not been dipped in paint thinner, they haven't been dipped in paint. If we're working with acrylics, they haven't seen water. Dry brush. It's pretty soft, it's got splayed bristles, which is gonna help. So basically now what we're doing is we're gonna be blending this out. You always wanna make sure you're stroking in the direction that the fur grows in, and that's going to basically create a lot of the fur texture for us. So grab your dry blending brush and we're gonna start blending. So you wanna use a really, really light hand. Um, you don't wanna smoosh everything together, and you do wanna still be mindful about where you've got like your margins of, you know, you've got your really darks, next to your lights. You wanna kind of be a little gentle with that and not blend them all together necessarily. But we're gonna be dragging these bristles along and it's going to help to build up that fur texture for us. So you can already see in this section here how it's building it up. So another thing with this dry blending is that inevitably, because we're working with wet paint, uh, you're gonna pick up some pigment on your brush. And I want, <laughs> You wanna make sure that you are not washing your brush. So what you wanna do is if you pick up too much pigment on your brush, you wanna to go to a rag or a paper towel or something and basically aggressively rub the bristles on the paper towel to remove that pigment. Do not wash your brush that you are using to blend until you're totally done. If you pick up way too much pigment on your brush and you just, you can't get it all off and it's just making more of a mess than anything, then grab a new brush. Sometimes your brush is just done, wash it, put it aside, grab a new dry brush for blending. So yeah, just basically work your way around the painting, blending things out a bit. So I personally like to not blend as much away from the important features of the face, which typically are like eyes, center of the face, the nose. I like there to be some texture, so I'm not gonna blend too much down here. Um, but if you want it to be totally smooth and not there, you know, not to have any fun texture with those brush strokes, then feel free to keep blending. You can see here why it's so important that you're stroking in the direction that the fur grows in because these bristles are basically dragging that wet paint. And what's kind of cool is that it actually ends up creating a bit of a fur texture for us. Which makes it really easy for us to create beautiful, realistic fur.
always find this to be a very satisfying step. It's kind of got a lot of roughness happening and then you can just kind of watch it all, you know, blend into something beautiful. Alrighty, that looks pretty good. I'm really happy with the way that looks so far. And yeah, so this is pretty much our underpainting done. The surface here won't pick up too much more paint, so we are gonna let this dry. And then basically we're gonna jump in and start to do some details once we jump back into our painting. So put your painting aside for a few days. We want it to be completely dry before we jump in with our next layer. Um, your palette. My favorite thing to do with my palette in between painting sessions is actually to put a little bit of like plastic wrap or saran wrap on top, lightly press it down, and then I store it in a box in the freezer. Um, and what that does is it keeps your paint wet for longer. And yeah, so you don't have to have any wastage. So put your paint away, put your painting away, and then I will see you in the next part of the video. Hey artists, thanks for watching the first part of this three-part video series where I'm walking you through each and every step of creating this realistic tiger portrait. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this episode, this tutorial is one of many that are found inside the Wildlife Painting Academy. So if you enjoyed it, you'd probably love everything else you'd find inside too. You can learn more about the Wildlife Painting Academy in the description of this video. All right, stay tuned for part two, where we jump into details.